we are going to take a look at some relations and determine whether or not they are functions. Okay, so let's look at part one over here. In the directions they say let D mapped onto R represent a domain D corresponding to a range R. Is the relation a function explain why or why not? So each of these represents a certain relation. We're going to determine whether or not they are a function. So with number one, children to mothers. Well, this one is actually a little ambiguous. But if we assume that they're talking about biological mothers, then this would be yes, because each child would have one and only one biological mother. This is a no, as sisters can have more than one brother. This is a yes, as people have only one age. This is a no, as several students could possibly be the same height. This is a no, as you know that students can have more than one teacher. This is a yes, as each state has one and only one capital. This is also a yes, but this is a no. There are cities in the United States that have more than one zip code. But each person has only one birthday. However, multiple people can have the same birthday. This is birthdays to people. So we're going to say that that's a no. And then lockers to students. Does every school locker correspond to one and only one student? Well, let's make that a no because not every school locker is assigned to one and only one student. We do have lockers that might be empty. And I'm sure in other schools you might find that school lockers are assigned to more than one student. And now we're ready for part two where we've got a different representation of relations. And same thing, we're going to determine um, if these are functions or non-functions. Now the first one, I see that every element in the domain corresponds to an element in the range, so this is a yes. This is also a yes, even though it's not as orderly as number one. Number three, because C corresponds to more than one element in the range, is a no. Number four is a Yes, every element in the domain corresponds to one element in the range. Number five is a no, because we've got an element in the domain that isn't corresponding to anything. Six is a yes. Here we've got an element in the range that doesn't have a correspondence, but that's okay, because the definition says nothing about the range. It's as long as every element in the domain corresponds to one element in the range, we're good. Okay, number seven. That's a definite no, because our only element in the domain is corresponding to multiple elements in the range. But going the other direction, this is okay. Every element here is corresponding to the same element here, but each element in the domain corresponds to one element in the range. And number nine is also a yes. With number 10, we start to see another representation. This is uh, what we have our coordinate pairs. And some of you might be able to tell just by looking at this set whether or not it's a function, but if you want to set up those bubbles, that's okay to do also. So our x-coordinate here would be in our domain. So we've got 2, 3, 4, and 5. So 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then in the range, we've got 3, 5, 7, and 9. Three, five, seven, and nine. And two is corresponding to three, three to five, four to seven, five to nine. And this is a function. Now if we do this with number 11, we've got three, two, one, three. Three, two, one. I'm not gonna rewrite three because we already have it. And then we've got one, three, two, two. So one, three, two, which we're only going to write once. Okay, so three corresponds to one, two corresponds to three, 
1 corresponds to 2, and 3 also corresponds to 2. And because of this, because 3 corresponds to two elements in the range, 11 is not a function. Number 12, notice 6 is corresponding to multiple values in the range, so this is a no. 13, we're okay, this is a yes. 14 is a no, and 15 is a yes. And now we've got another representation of a relation for 16 and 17. So 16y equals x squared. Well, you know that that's just this parabola. And you may remember the vertical line test, which tells us that if we draw a vertical line, as long as we don't pass through the relation more than once, we have a function. So this is a yes. But we can also think about this numerically if we made a table of values, like let's say 1, 2, 3. If x is being squared, y would be 1, 4, and 9. And what we begin to see is that every element in the domain has one and only one square. If you square a number, you're only going to get one other number. Now we could look at negative 2. Negative 2 squared is equal to positive 4. So we've got 2 corresponding to 4 and negative 2 corresponding to 4, but that's okay because every element in the domain is corresponding to one and only one element in the range. Now on the other hand, we've got, this is 16 here, number 17 is this y squared equals x. Now that's not solved for y, so let's go ahead and do that. In order to, we need to take the square root of both sides. And when we do that, we want to remember that we're going to have a positive and a negative root. So y could be equal to positive radical x or negative radical x. Just as if y was equal to 16, or y squared was equal to 16, we know that y could be positive or negative 4. So what we get here, here's our positive radical x, here is our negative radical x, and you'll notice right away that this fails the horizontal line test. And this is because many elements in the domain have two elements in the range. If we thought about this a little further with our bubbles, let's say 25 is in our domain, and the range would be both negative 5 and positive 5, and we can see visually that that's not a function. And here is our formal definition. We've got a function is a rule of correspondence that assigns each element in the domain to one and only one element in the range.